Hello, everyone. Welcome to Nails and Beauty Talk. I am your host, Asia the Bird. Today, I have a very special guest with me today. She is a nail artist. Please welcome Fo Acrylic. Hello, Fo Acrylic, and welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so tell us where you're from and give us a backstory of, you know, about your upbringing. So I'm from Southern California, and I have lived here pretty much my whole life. Um, well, actually, my whole life. And yeah, my mom is Hispanic, and my dad is white. And you know, they were always very supportive of my art and everything and kind of encouraged me to get into it. So kind of came out in the form of nails. <laughs> oh, that's really, really cool. But I definitely want to get into just in regards to like, what drew your interest in the nail industry? Um, So I've always been like a really heavy into art. Like I said, my mom was super supportive and my dad too. They're both artists in like their own right. And so I kind of dabbled in doing hair and like different things. And then, um, Pretty much when COVID hit, I was working at Sephora and no mm. one could get their nails done. <laughs> and my friend, right. um, my old coworker, Natasha, she was like, dude, I just spent like $80 on these press on nails and they're trash. And I was like, oh, no. And they were literally just like painted with like a sticker on them, $80. Right. And I was like, I can do better than that. I got you. So I literally went home, got her sizes, made her press on set. And I was like, here you go. She started wearing them, and then all the clients were like, how'd you get your nails? Where is your nails? Who does your nails? And right. they're like, oh, press on, she makes them. And then I started wearing them, same thing. So I kind of started my Instagram like that, and just like, oh, you can follow me, order press ons, like, good to go, you know? And then it just kind of mm -hmm. kept going from there. Yeah, that's really, really cool. Now, if you had a top five of nail artists, who would be, like, your top five of your favorite nail artists and why? Um, For sure, Vivian, which she's the one who does pamper nail gallery love her her work's like mm -hmm. outstanding uh nails by dev obviously we all love her um ball pit um forgot the other two the other one's name it's like tx something something but she does really cool like anime nails and mm -hmm. then i don't i couldn't find a fit i didn't like um But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I would say those four are for sure the ones I like will literally like stock their pages. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh Ball Pit and you know, like Tim Nell Studio and T uh was it TXT Fon? Yeah, I think that's her. She does the manga nails, you know, ball pit and like you know, yeah. they have like those people that are just like super talented. Yeah. Now I'm freezing there. a little bit. Oh, it's gonna Vaughn, come back though. Possible, like I love that about them because they're literally like so in the community and they're about the community. So it's like so nice to like have someone like you. Right. I just texted answered back, ball pit answers back. Like it's so nice for that, you know? And I try to be like that too. Like if anybody reaches out to me, I like try mm -hmm. to answer questions, or, you know, talk to them. And a lot of nail techs have been like, dude, you're the first person to respond to me. Like nobody responds. Like everybody's so rude. And I hate that about the industry. Like, right. It's so sad. It's like, just support your fellow artists. Like, we're all in this together. There's enough hands for everybody right. to do. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. I'm like, there's enough yeah, to yeah, spread around. Yeah, there's enough, you know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. There's there's definitely enough for everybody. And, you know, when you keep in touch and connect with other nail artists, you know what I mean? It yeah. makes things easier. You can learn from other people. Exactly. Like, it's a community. That's the whole part of it. So I hate when people kind of, right. like, Mm -hmm. shut off people it's like no just answer a question it's really not that hard like be nice right. i definitely want to get into and talk about your uh your nail business so what has been your journey of having your own nail business specifically like selling your own uh nail brushes like you know talk to us about that so i am a green girly like i love the color green i don't like pink very much <laughs> i'm sick of every brush being pink or purple or obviously like my aesthetic is like beetle juice and kind of weird and right. so I was kind of just sick of every brush I saw in every video being like pink or purple. I'm like, okay, right. I need to find out like how and where to make my own brushes, which I'll show you. But Ooh. I was so sick of like the plain pinks. One more, hold on. And so I kind of sought out and made like a green and black set because that's my preferred colors. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that's kind of what I did. And then I just like went and did different ones. So there's a couple liners in there and like different shading right. brushes. Um, kind of just stuff I use on a daily basis. So yeah, <laughs> that's kind of what I went to do because I was just sick of all the 
girly aesthetics because I'm not very girly. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. But like in terms of like your own nail business, like what are some things that you found like very, you know, difficult? Did you find anything easy within the journey of having your own nail business? Like what's the what's the journey been like? Um, I think at first for sure, like gaining clientele is pretty mm -hmm. it is difficult because you have to be very like on it. You can't right. like so even if you don't have clients that day, you have to sit here and make some posts, make some, you know, press ons, whatever it is. I got lucky because I kind of worked at Sephora. So I had a little bit of a target demographic there, like people who love mm -hmm. beauty typically love nails. So it's kind of easier right. and like gain a clientele that's near me. Mm -hmm. um, but for sure, it took a long time. Like that was a slow grow. And I slowly started when I started doing nails and I was going to nail school. Um, you know, it built from there slowly. But again, it's very slow. And you have to kind of like my biggest advice would be wear your art, wear your nails. Because the the way I get people, clients and everything is I have these long, crazy nails on. They're like, oh, my God, your nails. I'm like, I do them. Here's my card. Like, immediately. Right. Yeah. You, you can't be shy in this business. You have to just be very direct. Or even if you see someone's nails you like, be like, hey, girl, I have nails. I love your nails. You know, if you're looking for a new tech, here you go. <laughs> and more often than not, they're like, oh, you do art? Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> like, let's go. Because I, you know, I do the crazy art. So not a lot of people can do that, especially around here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. You definitely have to put yourself out there, you know, I mean, in order to gain a clientele, because, you know, like how you said, how are people want to really, you know, notice what you do if you don't put yourself out there? Exactly. And that's like, I always tell my friends and stuff who are in nails. I'm like, girl, you need to like wear your stuff. They're literally walking around with no nails on. And I'm like, how are you promoting your business then? Like, right. how are you expected to gain a clientele if you're not wearing them? <laughs> Same mm -hmm. with like, hairstylists. Like, you're going to have really nice hair and people are going to be like, oh my God, I love your hair. I'm like, I did it. Here you go. Card. Like immediately. Mm -hmm. you know, with any business, you have to promote yourself and be your biggest supporter, your own self, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, and even if you don't wear like your stuff, at least have like business cards or oh, like a business nice. showcase like, okay, work. Compliment their stuff and just say, hey, I love your nails. Here's my card. I do nails. Like that's it. And mm -hmm. half the time they follow, half the time they don't. But, you know, it's always an opportunity to get more followers or get, you know, cause even if they don't go to you cause they have, they're true to their nail tech, their sister might want to go to you or their little cousin loves anime and you do anime nails, you know, any mm. little, thing, it's like that one person can be 10 people. Right. It's all word mm -hmm. of mouth. It's all, you know, and be nice and kind and mm -hmm. answer questions, all that. And everybody's like, Oh yeah, perfect. Like easy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Most definitely. Now, what was the whole decision behind like doing your own line of press on nails? So again, that's kind of where I started is that's why the name is faux acrylic. It's fake acrylic nails, you know? Mm. Um, so basically I was sick of like the really like flimsy, you know, Walmart press ons that bend and break and snap and right. you can't reuse them. And they're like mm. cheap, you know? So I was yeah. like, okay, how can I make nails that look like acrylics, feel like acrylics are sturdy and I can reuse them? Cause the thing is right. I spend a lot of time on art, like these right. 15 hours yeah. yeah so spending that much time on something you don't want to just wear it once and take it off so right. for me, I'm like oh let me figure out how i can make them stronger and better and that's kind of where the name full acrylic came from because it's like you know you're, you're getting what you ask like my my page is what it is like mm -hmm. and started there and like i said a lot of people couldn't get their nails done because of the pandemic but they wanted acrylics and they didn't want like cheap press-ons. Right. So that's kind of where I filled that gap. It was like, oh, okay, well, I don't do pre cheap press-ons. I got you. They tried them once mm -hmm. and they're like hooked, you know? Yeah. And they're like, I don't have to sit there. I don't have to like, you know, drive. I could just get it sent right. to my house, have my sizes, you have my length. Exactly. Shape. Yeah. Anything. Perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I like your nails of what you have on now. Is that like the little mermaid? Like, no, it's perfect. Oh, oh, cool, cool. That's really, really cool. I love like the gradient on your nails and the characters you've done. It's really cool. Yeah, I'll send you a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what I like about what you ball pit and nails by Dev is that you guys are very good with like different characters, like from different yeah. cartoons, especially like early 2000s, 90s based characters. Oh, yeah. You know, the nostalgia is real. Like love doing Disney and portraits. Those are my like two go to's. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really cool. Like, what are some like your favorite like cartoons or TV shows like from the like the nineties and two thousands that you like to do on nails? Uh, again, Disney. So Hercules, 
The Little Mermaid. Um, what else? I've done like Powerpuff Girls. I don't know. There's a lot. I'm like looking at my wall. Um, Maleficent. <laughs> you know, a ton of them. Honestly, Disney a ton. I don't do that mm-hmm. much other stuff unless other people request it. But for myself, mm-hmm. it's always Disney or like Lisa Frank is like super cool. Right. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really cool. But I definitely want to get into this in regards to, you know, there's been a lot of conversations about um, like on, like understanding your worth, you know, and oh, having yeah. ownership yeah. of your nail art and things like that. And I definitely want to get your perspective of the importance of understanding one's worth and value because I think that's very, very important of charge with you, especially the work yeah. that you yeah. do. So I if you can like the most important. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can expand on you, if you can expand on that, that would be great. Yeah, of course. So Basically, when charging your worth, you have to know what you're worth. You know, a -hmm. lot of people take it as, oh, well, you know, my art's not that good yet. Or, oh, well, you know, they kind of always second guess themselves. And it's like, no, how much time did you put into that? You know, a lot of people Mm -hmm. try to charge by like the product. The product isn't, that's pennies on the dollar. You know, let's be honest. Like the press on nails and stuff, it's pennies. But, the actual cost comes with your knowledge and your skill and Mm -hmm. so you have to kind of you know take a step back and say okay like me i went to college for art i went to nail school i've invested thousands of dollars in myself Mm -hmm. and in my product and in my room and you know Mm -hmm. all the stuff i do for my clients and i'm constantly learning i take classes i teach classes i you know take the time out of my day to like really new like learn all the new things so if anyone's asking for Mm -hmm. You know, all the new trends, I know them. Right. I have them down. I got it. And so mm-hmm. I think you have to kind of take a step back and look at it like that. Like, okay, I've invested this amount of time, this amount of effort into learning all these things. And, you know, be realistic. You can base it off your skill and say, hey, you know, I don't feel like I'm necessarily at, you know, the highest point yet, but I'm mm-hmm. getting there, I'm getting better. And you can kind of look back. Like what I try to do is every year I remake a set of nails that I made last year. So, mm-hmm. like, this is actually a remake because mm. it was, okay, let me test my skill and see where I'm at now. And to me, these look so much better than the ones I did last year because I've learned over the year. And it's a good way to kind of judge yourself. And so mm-hmm. how I kind of, you know, charge my worth is if you really want to, you could take, like, minimum wage, right? And say, okay, mm-hmm. I spend five hours on these nails and kind of times it by that. Me personally, if I'm not getting paid at least $35 an hour, I'm not doing it mm-hmm. <laughs> so, because I right. put effort and time into my, my worth. Like I've put a lot of work into this and I feel like I'm at a higher standard and I mm-hmm. deserve it. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, yeah, absolutely. Your own biggest supporter. You have to know what you're worth. You can't just like second guess yourself and be like, oh, I'm not that good. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. And like yeah. the way to guess, like, you know, your skill and stuff is around your area. Like what I do too is I'll go on Instagram and kind of search nail techs, you know, in whatever area. And that's how you can kind of find, okay, where is my skill level? I'm looking at all these people. Am I better or worse (laughs) than the people Mm -hmm. in my area? And you can kind of judge it off of that and say, okay, you know what? I'm kind of in the middle. So these people charge this, these people charge this. Let me hit right here in the middle, the soft spot, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of places you go and people are going to pay, you know, like a regular shop might, I would go to it and pay $80 and it's one color and like this long, like little tiny short nails Mm -hmm. and it's $80 off the bat. (laughs) So why are Mm -hmm. you not doing that at least? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like I have friends in the industry, they'll be like doing beautiful sets and they're like, oh, $40. I'm like, girl, no. No. (laughs) Right. Pay for school. Like you went to school, you did your thing, you know? Like you mm. have to know what you're worth. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And and that's the thing too. You know, you also have to consider time as well. You know, like how you said before, if you put more than five hours into a set, you know, why not charge, you know, 80 plus dollars or at least a hundred something dollars yeah, for awesome. that set of nails? You know what I'm saying? Art, like mm. some people won't charge for their art. And I'm like, girl, that's the only thing you should be charging for, if anything. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like the base nail, yeah, it's cute, whatever, but like your art is worth a lot. Like you have to like grow that skill. It's a long Mm -hmm. time. It takes time, you know, like I've been drawing and doing art since I was like five years old. 
Right. And I'm 31 mm-hmm. now. So, you know, I have like 26 ex- years of experience. <laughs> mm-hmm. So you have to like think about that. Like I've been putting my work in my whole life. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Absolutely. You know, and I'm the same way I've been drawn since I was a kid. You know, I've always been to art since I was since yeah. I was a little kid and things like that. And, you know, and that's what I like about what Ball Pit and some of these nail artists are doing now is putting out TikTok saying like, you know, these are nails I've done is how much I would charge. Exactly. You know, and and the these- industry. Because I think a lot of the time right. people don't see our industry as, you know, profitable or they don't see it as like, I don't know, like as high end. Right, you know, they kind mm-hmm. of as a low end kind of like mm, bottom of the barrel type of market, and it's mm-hmm. really not. There's people out there that will buy your stuff if you're good, you know. That's why, mm-hmm. like clientele, I don't have any basic clients. Like I don't have anyone who just gets a little French tip. My clients come to me and they say, "Hey, I like this character. Do what you do." They pay me for what I do. They don't pay me necessarily for the nails. They pay me for my skill. Mm-hmm. You know, and all my clients like they really respect me and they. You right. know, they take like they'll only come on their days off. They're like, I don't care how long it takes as long as you get it done. Like, cool. Right. You know, and you mm-hmm. can build a clientele like that. Like a lot of people ask me how you get a clientele that only likes art. And I'm like, you have to kind of just put it out there. Like a f- last year around this time, I basically told my, you know, more simple clients like, hey, I have a friend who does nails. She's very good. I trained. Mm-hmm. Her. She does more basic nails and more simple nails. But I want to recommend you to her because I want to open up my books to people who want characters and who want art and want what I do. And, you know, unfortunately you are filling a spot right. that is someone who's been waiting on the list, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? And at that time I literally had a waiting list of like 10 people. Right. Once, mm-hmm. once they left, the new ones came in and they were more right. than happy to me what it was worth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and you have to consider like, you know, the quality of the products and things like that, that you do, you know, and like how you said, you know, you don't want to dim, you know, your worth and your value and things like that. You know, of course you want to know what you're worth, things like that. And you have to consider your skill level, you know, but don't, yeah. you know, down your work and, you know, and everybody's progressing in different ways in terms of their nail artistry. And that's what I like about, you know, within the nail business, because there's so many things you can learn, you know, that's what's exactly. awesome and, about nail education. You can learn so much stuff for free. Right. Like, there's so much knowledge out there, like YouTube, you know, I like how I learned a lot of the stuff about the industry. I watched Young Nails on YouTube, their podcasts. Mm-hmm. Like, that's all I watched. I would be at Sephora at work and like four o'clock in the morning, have my, my headphones in and be listening to their podcast the entire shift. Like double time, like, let me put stuff away. Let me clean, like do this. Right. But I'm learning about the industry. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you know, and they really mm-hmm. talk about your worth and what you should charge and how you should, you know, go about it and it's really knowledgeable and helpful and like stuff like that like use you know the internet and youtube university to your advantage like you can get a lot of knowledge from just absolutely you know Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely and plus learn it from you know you know also social media too because there are some you know like nail dad and like i said ball pit who oh yeah like certain things like her little step-by-steps i like even make step-by-step tutorials which i need to kind of get back on uh, mm-hmm. but you know, breaking them down how she does, like I, I have like step-by-step sheets like that too. And I used to teach mm-hmm. classes in person and the students would come in and be like, I can't even draw a stick figure. And I'm like, you know how to draw a circle, right? They're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know how to draw a line? Yes. Yep. All right, cool. Got you. Like, that's all I need. And yeah. I yeah. Know how to use the brush and how to use line weight and, you know, mm-hmm. color mixing and all this stuff. And they're, I'm like, you know, this, you've done this since right. kindergarten. We all have done it. So you need to, you know, have some confidence. And of course, like maybe your first one's going to be ugly. Guess what? Your second one will be a little less ugly. (laughs) It'll be a little bit less ugly. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. I didn't start out. I never drew cartoons until I started doing it. I was a portrait artist through and through, like did not do cartoons. And they're different, like completely Mm -hmm. different worlds. And so I had to very much take a step back and simplify what I did because Mm -hmm. they're the same it's very different so i kind of had to be Mm -hmm. like okay no let me reteach myself and learn and now i feel like i have it down where everything's accurate that's my biggest thing is like accuracy and i was in here for 8 10 12 hours practicing and you know making different press-ons you know making press-ons for my friend or my mom or you know and Mm -hmm. those people in my life like i always have people in my life who are very um like straightforward with me 
And I'll ask my mom, like, does this look right? And she's like, nope. <laughs> the eyes right. off, off. Like, she's very critical in a good way. And same mm-hmm. with my, for my boyfriend. Like, my boyfriend would be like, that does not look right. Like, try again. Mm-hmm. You know? And I think it's good to have people who are honest with you. And so mm-hmm. maybe find someone who you know is honest and can help you with that. Because that's the biggest factor in getting accuracy and, like, you know, getting your art down. <laughs> is, like, having someone mm-hmm. tell you it's not right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely. But I definitely want to get into you being a nail artist for Pamper Nail Gallery because I know oh. we talked about this shoot earlier. So what has been your experience, you know, doing nails, you know, for Pamper Nail Art Gallery, uh, for, for Pamper Nail Gallery? So it's pretty cool. It's a, a laid back little gig. Um, I just basically they kind of send you uh, prompts and it's you just come uh, like pick and choose what you want to do. So like she'll send say 10 out and I'm like, okay, I'm interested in doing this one. Like that's kind of my little side part, like my side gig. Like I don't do it all the time because I don't have time all the time. Sometimes I'm fully booked for the week. So I don't have time. Um, But they send them out once a week and you kind of get a pick and choose and do it like a la carte style. Like, okay, I'll do her. I'll do this one. You know, Mm -hmm. and it's actually really cool. Like it's, I love what she does because she's really opened up the press on nail industry. And people know her for that. And I followed her since day one. Like, she's kind of partially the reason I, like, wanted to do nails. Because Mm -hmm. I followed her when she did, like, salon nails. Like, acrylic nails and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I was like, that's so cool. Like, she does portraits. And she does, you know, characters. And, like, she's so good. Like, her talent is, like, literally, like, up here. Like, she's so talented. And so just work for her and in her business to me, it says a lot because she has such a high standard that, like, mm-hmm. the I got accepted was, like, oh, that's, like, really cool. You know, she's mm-hmm. doing the work and she approves of it, basically, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, to me, that was, like, really cool and validating. Yeah, that's absolutely really, really cool. Just with regards to illustrate a cartoon character of any kind or for portrait, you know, or, like, a landscape throughout, you know, within the nail. So, what would you say are the most common mistakes that people make when trying to do either like a cartoon character, a portrait, or like a, uh, you know, like a landscape type of thing? You know, what, what would you say would be the common mistakes? I would say the common mistakes is rushing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think people kind of, you know, they get nervous, like, especially if you're working mm-hmm. on a client. Right. Nerve wracking, right? Because someone's watching you. And so I think you have to kind of take your, like, you know, take your time, slow down. And really right. think about it. And it's exactly. easy once you, like, get out of your own way, <laughs> pretty mm-hmm. much. It's, like, you know, characters, um, they're pretty simple. But it is complicated in a way because you have to get the proportions right. And trying to do it right. on a curved surface and doing stuff mm-hmm. like that. But Again, it comes back to practice. It comes right. to doing it all the time. Like, I feel like I got good at nails because I do it consistently. Like, mm-hmm. I do it all the time, whether I'm off or on, like, Yesterday, I literally spent, like, any free time I had doing these. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I spent three hours right before uh, Easter. And I, like, was like, okay, let me hurry up and do these so I can get these done. But it's kind of mm-hmm. like challenging yourself. I think, you know, you don't challenge yourself enough and you don't sit and spend enough time with yourself. And I think that's the biggest mistake is mm-hmm. the timing. I think people want to learn things overnight and mm-hmm. things easy. And it's not easy <laughs> at all. Mm -hmm. I I would say that's the biggest is like just not, you know, sitting and doing it and Mm -hmm. and like learning. Yeah. Yeah. And especially to add on to that in terms of like the time, I think, you know, the reason why also people rush as well is the comparison to other nail artists, you know, in terms of advancement, you know what I mean? So people got to understand like, you know, how people become so good at what they do in terms of characters and landscapes and realistic portraits is they've been doing it for years and they've practiced consistently, exactly. like how you said before. So it's going to take time for you to get a knack to understand how to do certain things within nail art. Yeah, like I said, I've taught classes before and it's like they get discouraged so quickly. Like if they mm-hmm. don't step right away, they're just like, I'm horrible about this. And I'm like, you've done it for t- like two hours. Mm-hmm. I've done 24 or 26 years or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm-hmm. You know, obviously, it's not going to take as long to get to my point. But at the same time, like, if you look at Ball Pit, scroll all the way back on her Instagram. Look at all the way back on her Instagram. You know, look at Vivian. Scroll all the way back on her Instagram. You're going to see where they started or at least close to it. Like, I love Mm -hmm. because Pit will always post, like, this is where I started. And it's, like, a little weird happy Mm -hmm. 
and it's all sloppy and like you know the cuticles right. are blood all this and that was only a few years ago you know mm -hmm. it takes time like you didn't learn how to drive a car overnight you didn't learn how to ride a bike overnight like you had right. to do it so like, again everything takes time like yeah and you, you know rush yourself <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I also want to get into in terms of the process of the nail art. So how do you go about like putting like a nail art set together, whether it's like characters, the color scheme, like how do you plan all that stuff out? Yeah. So a lot of the time my clients will kind of tell me, hey, like, you know, before their appointment, they're like, oh, I want to get like, say these ones. They want um, mm -hmm. Hercules nails. And I'm like, okay, like how many characters do you want? They're like, okay, I want this, this, this included. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I'll kind of start looking up references and mm -hmm. kind of like try to build a story so like this right. to me is like when hercules mm -hmm. and meg fell in love at the end of the movie and then right. bill and pegasus are like watching them and like happy for them and then hades is mad with pain and panic <laughs> and, like here you know what i mean so, right like to me i'm like oh like i'll build the story or like um you know the aesthetic or something like that i kind of build it off mm -hmm. of so like these I've done, I have like some right here. <laughs> so wow. I have Lisa Frank nails and I was like, okay, I kind of want like a rainbow ombre. That was my first thing and really big bling, you know? Mm -hmm. Thing with these, I wanted them to match my backpack that I have. And then right. the Ursula, like same with these, it's when she got her voice taken by Ursula. And then I love these, like the little um, mm -hmm. tentacle ones. So I was mm -hmm. like, you know, I, try, I try to build a story off of it so you can see like, oh, that's that scene from that movie. Or, oh, right. like, you know, it kind of, everything plays off each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really cool. But I definitely want to get into just in regards to, like, marketing, because I know you did talk about word of mouth and putting yourself out there. But what are some other ways new nail artists can really connect with other people and put themselves out there? Yeah, I think posting consistently, big one. Like, mm -hmm. I try to post, you know, at least once a day, um, and it's posting not just on your page, like you want to post on your story, you want to be interactive, mm -hmm. like people should know who you are, or at least know, like, you're active, you know, if you're not posting, like, you're posting once a week, nobody that that goes to the bottom of your timeline, you're not gonna see it. If I'm posting right. every day on my story, guess what, it pushes it to the front of the story every time I post. So mm -hmm. you're gonna see me first and be active all the time. Mm -hmm. Or you can go live and talk to your, you know, your, your client base or you know, do some press ons on live and like talk to everybody because then they get to know you. And the more people mm. get to know you, the more comfortable they feel. And right. I would say being very upfront with your pricing mm -hmm. and being, you know, very um, just kind of telling people, hey, this is what I like, I charge because right. people get scared or nervous to ask because some people are mean, like mm. I said, getting. Right. And so, like, I get nervous to go ask, like, you, you're not at a grocery store, like, if there's no price on something, you're like, I don't want to ask. Like, uh, <laughs> like I get right, nervous. right. You know, yeah. so I have it on my my highlights on my story. Like, hey, this is what I charge. This is what days I'm available, and then I post mm -hmm. all the time. See, hey, she's active. Hey, she posted today that she's available these days. Like, yeah. you know, they get comfortable with you, and they see little things about you. Or like, you know, I'll post like my Starbucks drink. They're like, okay, like they feel like they know you. And right. I think the thing is kind of putting yourself out there so your clients and your, you know, community can know you mm -hmm. a lot because then they feel more comfortable and they're like, oh, you know what? Let me ask. Like, let me talk to them. Right. You know? Because, like, I mean, like I yeah. said, I'm a nervous person. I will not ask anybody anything. I'll just, <laughs> I'll leave it alone. But if they're like, yeah, yeah. questions like, hey, like, I have a space for new clients. Hit me up. Like, kind of all the time. Like, yeah. Okay, like, maybe I'll hit her up. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly, most definitely. But I want to get into nail products because nail products like the fun thing I love talking about. So what are some of like your favorite nail products to use like when doing nail art? So my base colors, I use like gel, the gel bottle ink, like mm. such a good product line. Um, it is for professionals only, which, you know, sometimes is unfortunate for, you know, the beginner techs and stuff. But I use Dev, like Nails by Dev. Her gel polishes are great. I mm -hmm. uh, also love the Kira Sky, like, liners. Mm -hmm. Those are so pigmented. Like, my favorite liner gel is from Kira Sky. It's the little, I have, like, five of these black ones. <laughs> wow. Yeah. They're my favorite. It's, like, super consistent, super, like, you can get really thin lines, really thick lines. It's mm -hmm. pigmented. Like, it's my favorite. <laughs> and I have, like, all their, every color they, own, like, made. Um, as for brushes, obviously I use my own, 
but I also do use devs and I use the gel bottle ink as well. I think those are mm -hmm. like very top quality, really good. I love to use, you know, multiple products. I'm not a fan of just like, let me stick to this one thing, this one line, right. this brand. I kind of like, oh, let me try everything and see what my favorites are. And then I kind of stick to those. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's the gel bottle ink, Kira Sky and dev. Like those are my mm -hmm. like go-tos. Yeah, yeah. I've been using um a prey and a prey is pretty good, pretty pigmented. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like their um their press on like the actual uh yeah, the gel X. Gel X ones. Yeah, those are really nice. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but unfortunately they don't make the really long ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, and that's what I wear. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Where you get the really long, like you know, um, you know, faux faux acrylic nails, like the uh, the clear stiletto from Enail Couture. Oh, okay. Yeah, because these are his like ten XL like extreme stiletto or something like that. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like that's and that's what I like. I love wearing this length. Like that's my favorite. It's either this or like if I wish he had the same ones like this length. Mm -hmm. Right. I get mm -hmm. longer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the, the longest like he has another one that's like long but they're really c-curved so they don't fit my fingers oh okay flat nail beds so they don't work for me but i'm like oh if he had square ones that like this length oh i would be so happy but <laughs> i do like my go-to is stiletto so i'm like i'm so thankful he has these ones because they're mm -hmm. like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I definitely want to get into in regards to the growth of the nail industry. Like from how you first got into the nail industry to now, what is your take in regards to the growth of the nail industry? And what are some things you like to see more of within the nail industry? For sure. I honestly see nothing but positive changes, honestly. Like, I think mm -hmm. we're getting more respect as a community. And I think people are seeing that, you know, nails are worth what they're worth. Like they're seeing, right. you know, quality people coming up in the industry and, you know, people are working on, like, celebrities and kind of getting their name out there. And it's, I think, helping a lot because it's showing, hey, you know what? This person is paying and they don't have a problem right. with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's influence right there. They have the influence. They're saying, like, you know, you've seen press on nails on Cardi B. <laughs> like, seen, right. you know, and and that girl who I forgot her, her name, but that girl, talented, like, super talented. She's made, like, the ones that are, like, four inches long. Mm -hmm. And. You know, like it's nice to see a celebrity and like people endorsing these smaller companies and businesses. And I mm -hmm. think like a big thing in the industry is like everybody's being a lot more supportive and like, right. you know, making sure that we're heard too. Like it's not mm -hmm. just uh, like nails. Okay, whatever, <laughs> you know? Right. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, yeah, it's just really nice and it's going up from there. And like something I'd like mm -hmm. to see more is just more of a community. You know, like mm -hmm. I said, can be mean. <laughs> And so I'd right. love to see like more people coming together and just sharing their knowledge and helping people out. Cause like I said, if you see the top creators, you see that they're very interactive and they're very supportive of their community. And there's no like ill will. There's no, oh, she's not as good or oh, this and that. Like you see all the top creators, like right now, like Ball Pit and Dev did a collab, the gel. Uh, right, the, gel, the jellies. You know, and they have collabs coming out with like Tim. He's super talented too. Right. And, you know, they're like doing lives and videos and stuff. And you see all these like nail techs coming together and they're friends. And you're like, right. oh, okay. Like, you know, you're getting into the industry and like seeing that, oh, these people are friendly and they answer questions. Like, Tim, I'll go on live and talk to Tim for two hours. Mm -hmm. And I'm just chilling, like texting and like whatever. And, <laughs> and he's just like, oh my God, this and that. Right. And like texting and it's nice. And like, same with Deb. Like, she answers back. Ball Pit answers back. Like, you see these people who are at the top of their game and they're actually right. really cool and supportive and nice. And I think that's the best thing about, about this industry is like the community. Mm -hmm. And I think we all just need to take a step back and like make our community stronger. Cause that's Absolutely. how, we, you know, get like a whole community. That's how we become mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, people too, like learning more art and kind of doing funner things and like, getting outside of their box. So they have like a lot of friends that do nails and they're very stuck in like a glitter ombre or like, you know, a French tip because their clients don't like that. But I'm like, girl, right. if you put yourself out there and say, hey, who wants this? <laughs> or, oh, hey, I'm looking to mm -hmm. do something like this. Are any of you guys interested? You'd be right. surprised how many clients are like, oh yeah, I'm down. Like, cool, let me up, hook me up, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be nice to see like people doing what they want to do more. Right, right.
Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also to like creative freedom. And I like how with certain okay. people, like when you deal with clients, they say, hey, do it, do what you do. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's like 90, I would say 90% of my clientele now is like, girl, I just want this character, do what you want. <laughs> like everybody's mm-hmm. half free writing with it. And it's such a nice thing because they trust me. Like, and I don't right. have complaints. Nobody like is like, mm, I don't really like it. You know, they're like, nope, mm-hmm. love it. Cool. Here's 50 bucks in, in a tip. Like, Mm-hmm. No one's asked, you know, and they're like, let me book my next one. So that way I don't miss out again. Mm-hmm. And like I said, it gets addicting. Yeah. Get, like, I love it too, because you get the attention. So they're right. like, they're excited to tell people about their nail tech. Like I have right. clients that are like, um, you know, get the attention for their nails. And they're like, girl, my nail tech, here it is. Like, they love carrying my cards. I get stickers, anything that they could give out to the like, people at the ask them randomly. They're like, yes, right. thing. <laughs> like, here's her, her page, like, go follow her, go talk to her, like, and I love it, like I said, being nice gets you a long way, because they're like, no, she's so mm-hmm. nice, you know, just ask her, even if it's not within your budget, she'll work with you, like, she'll mm-hmm. find, or I'll recommend another artist that may be within right. their budget, because I have mm-hmm. tons of friends who are in the industry, and they're really good, but they don't have a huge clientele, and I right. always offer, like, hey, you know, maybe my thing isn't your thing, <laughs> but mm-hmm. this girl does really great, and she can do a lot of things, you know, mm-hmm. and I always recommend like my friend, um, her name is Solo Nails. Mm-hmm. I always recommend her. I'm like, hey, like I don't have space right now in the next month, but she does. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, cool. they'll hit her up. I've had so many people be like, girl, your friend is so talented, so amazing. Like, I'm so glad you hooked me up with her. And they're like super happy about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, what are some things that you found the most rewarding with just being a nail artist? You know, it's really rewarding actually being able to make a living doing something I love. Mm -hmm. Like nails is my passion and art is my passion. I've been a nail girly since I was a child. Like I have a picture of me and my great grandma and she's painting my nails at the like dining room table. And like my fifth birthday, first thing, my mom was like, oh, what do you want for your birthday? I'm like nails. I want nail salon. Like, let's go. My 13th birthday, my mom was like, what do you want? I'm like acrylics, like immediately. (laughs) Right. It was like, you know, I would go with my mm-hmm. mom and I went to the nail salons, just sit there and like watch them. Mm-hmm. And I was so excited to just be there. And right. so, you know, that's like my biggest thing is just, I'm excited to do what I do every day. And I get paid right. to do what I love. And like, you know, in the, in the art world, there's not that many opportunities, you know, right. to get out there with your art. It's really hard to make mm-hmm. money. You know, you do hair. A lot of people do hair <laughs> and that's kind of it. And I'm really mm-hmm. glad that I found this little community because it's like, I get to do exactly what I love and what I'm good mm-hmm. at and get mm-hmm. paid for it. You know, it's really rewarding in that sense. Yeah, yeah. And and absolutely. That's the thing. That's the beauty about the industry because there's so many nail art styles to gravitate oh. towards. Like, that's why I got inspired by one of the nail arts that's from Chicago, Spiffster, because her mm-hmm. nail style is absolutely unique, like very abstract, graffiti. You know, she's also an illustrator, designer. So I like how some nail artists eventually venturing into different things. Like how you said with Nails by Deb, she's not only a nail yeah. artist, she's a businesswoman. She has her own nail products, her own nail brushes, you know, her trippy gel, you know, yeah. so people are venturing into different things. Definitely. And it's it's really fun to see like all these people, because so many people are so creative and have different ideas. Like I see cool stuff with like, uh, like airbrush and, you know, like mm-hmm. kids typing or stuff like that or like you said graffiti like so many different things 3d nail art like all this stuff and it's like wow like and to me i try not to look at other people as like competition i look at them as inspiration like i really Mm -hmm. try to say hey like you know what are they doing that i really like and you can kind of pull little things and like make it your own and say hey like i really love the way that they do this or that or whatever i saw a girl doing a ton of airbrush and i'm like how can i incorporate that and how can i teach people like you know it's worth like learning you know right and absolutely. I, yeah and like so now like the like the the base on these are like airbrushed and it wow. just it changes you know mm-hmm. and it's really like fun to do and i think that's what it's great because you can take little inspiration even from other places like like i said like you know the pinstriping like i love right. watching pinstriping videos mm-hmm. of people doing it on cars and stuff and to me it's like oh you right. learn it from that like the steady hand and like doing all that you can yeah. take piece from you know them pinstriping lowriders and like use it in your nails <laughs> and right, thing, right. sculpting or art like I kind of pull inspiration from like all this stuff like my favorite show growing up was like how it's made mm-hmm. <laughs> so stuff like that like how to do anything is my favorite thing so it's kind of nice mm-hmm. to like kind of 
again, not compare, but right. draw from all these really creative people and not get just so disturbed by like, oh, I'm not as good as them. It's like, no, I'm going to be that. I'm going to do that. You know, you have to really right. push yourself to, hey, this is a goal of mine. Let me reach it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah yeah absolutely last but not least where can people find you on social media how can people support you and your work yeah of course my instagram is faux acrylic uh f-a-u-x-a-c-r-y-l-i-c and same faux is where you can find my brushes and that's pretty much it that's all i'm on i think tiktok's the same all right cool <laughs> cool <laughs> <laughs> well thanks so much ariel for jumping on the sh to the show your work is absolutely amazing uh, I was following you for a while and, you know, I love looking at your stuff. You know, your your work is absolutely detailed. I love your attention to detail. I love your style. Yeah, you know I'm what like, I mean? Aesthetic. I try to make everything, you know, cohesive and pretty yeah, to look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, your stuff is really, really amazing. Thank you so much. I had a very Thank wonderful you. conversation. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to click the bell for notifications. Also follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Be sure to check out my website, asiaatbird.com, and be on the lookout for more interviews to come very soon. Take care, stay healthy, and stay beautiful. Bye-bye.